you've been waiting for, a good challenger from California. Do you believe in Mike I was on a bus and uh, people were asking me about my kids, right? So I started in talking about Jonathan and then I started talking about Michael. And uh, they said, what does Michael do? And I said, well, to the best of my knowledge, he's a, a, a video gamer, right? A p professional, if that's what, you know, at the highest level. He, he, they said, what is your son's name? I said, his name is Mike Ross. And there's a kid on the bus and this, his father asked him, says, hey, Judah. Because Judah's a gamer, too. You ever heard of Mike Ross? And the guy looks back and he says, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's big. <laughs> is what you'll you could probably witness is you'll see me play online and then I'll get a message then of course he says that I need a <laughs> anyways let me uh, see if I can uh, uh, demonstrate some talent this is the easy part of my job is demonstrating the talent I know my Laboratory is a mess, but... My name is Mike Ross. I'm 26 years old, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. Some of my hobbies consist of playing guitar. Uh, you know, I could be on that all day. <laughs> what else? I like to, you know, just hang out with my friends and stuff like that. Sometimes we may go to comedy clubs and whatnot, or just have a good night at Roscoe's. <laughs> This dude's a scrub, man. You know, I went to Cal State Los Angeles, got my bachelor's in communications under television and film. I'm really proud about that. Um, I'm also a, a competitive Street Fighter IV player, and I play that professionally. This guy did, like, the scrubbiest tactic ever to beat me, and it worked. And I really hate it when that happens. Because it's like these are certain things that only happen online and a lot of people know what I'm talking about because of like lag and delay or whatever. Okay, he joined me again. So this is good. He joined me again. So all that saltiness you saw with my head on the floor, I'm going to prove that he sucks when I play him this time. I actually started when I was three years old because uh, I had like broken my leg trying to imitate Tony Hawk skate moves. You know, I had VHS tapes, me and my brother, and then uh, we were actually next door in the front yard, and we grabbed a skateboard, and he tried to, like, throw the skateboard at me, and I tried to jump on it and try to do some cool stuff. One leg ends up catching on the board, the other's, like, still on the sidewalk, so it's like his legs pretty much split apart, and that's how he, like, broke his leg as a kid. It was minor, but uh, it turned out to be something quite major. He had a hairline fracture in one of his, uh, uh, in, a, in one of the bones in his leg. So they immobilized him, they put him in a full body cast for over three months. And my dad felt like really bad for me. Uh, obviously, you know, I know it sucks, but I didn't really care too much because I don't know what kind of stuff I'm truly missing. We, he was on in a wheelchair, you know, as a, a way to get around. And what we did was we bought him a Nintendo. So we got heavy into uh, like all the old school video, the Nintendo games, like your uh, balloon fights, excite bike. Duck Hunt, Mario Brothers, 
Mach Rider, Gumshoe, you know, a bunch of old school original games and stuff like that. And he mastered it. Okay, Michael scored a million points on Super, Super Mario Brothers, and we kind of figured he was pretty good. And a couple of years later, a few years later, after he got out of the cast, he continued to play the video games, and he became really adept at one of those basketball games. And my recollection of that, the best I have, is that he entered in a tournament over at Blockbuster Video right near the house. He was about eight years old, and I, I remember him playing against teenagers, right, 16, 17-year-old kids coming in there playing this tournament, and Michael, you know, wound up beating all of them. And you'd hear in the background this voice, he's on fire, and in the foreground you see all these people that are watching him and they're saying, come watch this little kid, right, this guy is good, right, he's kicking the crap out of everybody in there. That was fun to watch, because he was my son, little tiny guy, because he, he was always small for his age, and, you know, at that time, and, and uh, it was just fun to watch him beat up on people that age him. That's all I have. That was great. <laughs> My dad is uh, a, a crazy version of me. Uh, he, like he, you know, I can be crazy at times. He's just got the crazy on 24 hours a day. You know, my dad is, uh, you know, really cool and tolerant with like what I do and stuff like that. He completely supports uh, my Street Fighter stuff. And my mom, you know, she's definitely like my biggest inspiration uh you know she she passed away in 2008 um but you know she she was definitely my big influence still you know i'm always having her in mind on everything and uh my brother is just like a huger version of me uh, my brother doesn't game or anything he just criticizes me <laughs> so i always look to him for like you know guidance even though he's usually he's like super hard on me he he just wants to make sure that I don't do anything stupid. But, you know, that's my family. They're, they're here to look out for me. That's the way to slug them, though, dude. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> now, he's always been pretty good when it came to the hand-eye coordination. Growing up, when it came to sports, he was really good at baseball. Like, when it came to second base, shortstop, things like that, he'll catch everything. And same with his hitting, it was really good as well. But then I think somewhere along the line, whether it was from injury or just like the loss of interest because he loved the games but hated the actual practice of like the repetition from sports practicing. Uh, if he were a bigger kid he probably would have played high school football or something like that but he, he's very agile, he's very quick, you know, in, in, in short movements like that. So I, I wouldn't say that he could have used that to go on to become a street fighter you know, right. professional or anything like that sure. because I didn't know but uh, I could see why he's probably good at it because he is pretty pretty adept physically you know my most famous um moment i guess like the thing that really established me was the second place at gamestop you know that was a tournament where every gamestop in the u.s had tournaments at their stores that you can compete in um and the top 16 would get flown to san francisco to uh you know basically put on a show for everybody and play uh for the grand prize which was uh, a street fighter 4 arcade machine and, you know that values that like it values for a good amount of money. There was about 100,000 people that entered that tournament across the United States. But I got second place. And like from that, you know, people said, you know, who is this Mike Ross guy? I turned a lot of heads with that one. I've known him since 2001 when we both started competing at around the same time. And as good as he was, like he was only considered maybe a threat. He wasn't really considered like an odds on favorite. He beats top players, but doesn't win all the time. He's very excited to watch play. I didn't necessarily win a bunch of tournaments. I've won tournaments. Like Mike's been all over the place because people at, at one point would call him like Mike Loss. Like, I mean, people troll like that all the time. Oh, Mike Loss, you know what I mean? One of my favorite prizes, even though like I've won, you know, a couple sticks. I love all the sticks that I won. You know, these tournament edition Mad Cat sticks. These are the best sticks available. I didn't have an Xbox for like two months. And uh, Halloween tournaments, actually I went longer I think without an Xbox, but uh, yeah, I won this one. People tried to come after me for this video battle opera title, but you're never taking it. The title is mine. This is my belt, Street Fighter 4. And that's, you know, after I won this, I retired from those tournaments so that I can never give it up. <laughs> For the most part, it's just that I was usually a consistent player. I always did well at every single tournament. Well, we're going to be heading to San Diego today uh, for a two-person uh, team tournament. It's a team tournament, and uh, my partner lives in San Diego. He told me to come down because we should get a free win. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm going. But 
it's, it's never free. We've got some competition down there. We'll see what happens. Shady K is... He's the secret weapon of San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I know. Best, 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 best kept secret. He's the best kept secret of San Diego. Yeah, yeah, they didn't come down here for a second. Even, yeah. though, even though there's some problems in the tournament, it's like, of course, we should be okay. As long as we just do what we always do, we should be fine. As long as we get distracted up here. That's good. That's a shame. Bro, you can't. Yeah, popular guys, come inside, motherfucker. Talking to you, not me. You ain't talking to me. Yeah, I was uh, we're going to the Spio style, that means the first person on Team A plays the first person on Team B, second person on Team A plays second person on Team B, and then uh, if you need another game, then uh, the winners play out. First place prize, it's like, there's 26 teams here, so it's like 70% of the, of the money goes to first place. Uh, third place gets a handshake from me. So, <laughs> Job working for that one. Try to come in first. <laughs> Street Fighter is a video game where it puts one player against another and they pick their guys who they want to beat the other person up with and that's pretty much all it is. You got your characters, you go at it, and you keep fighting until one of them's knocked out. The best way for me to describe Street Fighter to somebody who's never seen it before, um, it's very basic. At the beginner level, you can say it's like checkers. You know, you got your pieces. You got one side, you got the other side. I have my character, they have their character. And then you just keep moving your pieces around or throwing around different attacks until you've defeated the other player. Here you have your two characters. They have their life bars. So the point of this game is to keep attacking your opponent until you drain their entire life bar. When you drain their entire life bar, you win the round. Every match, you have to win two out of three rounds. Some would argue as, you know, the more you play the game, it gets more advanced, and that's why I would say it would turn into chess. Um, that's when you have to know your opponent. You have to know where they want to move. You have to know when they want to move, which pieces at what time. In other words, you have to know what character wants to do a certain attack at what point and what time, and you have to be ready for it and be able to react in time to counter their move. We got Mike Ross versus uh, Viscant. Mike Ross playing his um, signature Honda. First match, only match. Let's see how it goes. Well, I didn't see it coming. You know, I thought by now Street Fighter would be dead. <laughs> I would have thought, oh man, this thing, how long can you play that arcade game? But all of a sudden, it seems like it's going through a rebirth. The first Street Fighter came out sometime in the early 90s and when it came out it like became a huge success you know people were saving quarters non-stop just to make sure they can run to the liquor store the gas station wherever arcades had the game and uh, you know they would just play and play and play and because of its success they kept making newer versions of Street Fighter since the early 90s and they sort of slowed down in 2000 and it took them nine years until they released Street Fighter 4 um, and now the game is bigger than it's ever been. You know, now with everybody having a home console, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, uh, the game is released to everyone at home. You know, they can anybody can just go out in the store and just buy it. So you don't have to save up your quarters anymore. Now all you need is, you know, your controller or your joystick, whatever you're comfortable with. And, you know, anybody can play it. Anytime, anywhere. That slide is free. A lot of people don't know, neutral ground fuse bundle doesn't hit low. Let us see what Mike does now. Oh, Mike, wow. Wow, Mike Ross, everybody. My main character in this game is E. Honda, and, you know, he's a sumo wrestler guy, and I just picked him because, you know, he does a lot of damage. Um, he hits hard. His only problem is that it's hard for him to get in on other characters, but when he does get in there, he's in there. Okay, so he plays E Honda, which is typically like a slower or more defensive character. 
Mike plays him like he's not a huge fat sumo wrestler. Mike plays him like he's like this little nimble, agile character, but he's not. He was considered a great player. He was probably considered the best Honda in the U.S. But the problem with that is that Honda was considered a bad character. Most people don't play Honda that way. That's pretty much the point. So Mike has a very flashy style, I guess you could say, or he has a very exciting style. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right, that's the first match, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so we got Mike Ross coming up on the left. Watts looking confused here, walking into a lot of Stan Pearson. Oh, very nice back nice back. Very nice. Oh, wow. wow. That was just style. Yeah, I just hear the heckling from here. I know, but I had to stop. And the older one, I'd say Abel was barely better. We and Combo Fiend go back since 2001 or 2002. Yeah, 2002, we were just like rivals. You know, after a year or two, then people started talking. And like the way we are now, you know, now we're just good friends outside of the game. So, you know, this community is good like that. Meet good people. We haven't played in two months, so now I'm curious to see what happens. That's why I said I just want to play him, see how it goes. If I beat him, then I know nothing's changed. I'm still better. What are you going to do? I mean, if I had to guess his competitiveness probably came because, like, he was never the type. He didn't want anybody to go easy on him just because he was younger or smaller than the rest of us. Like, I've always been extremely competitive, but then our other cousins are also extremely competitive. So him being the younger one, he always had to, like, be even more competitive, even stronger, faster, quicker, just to hang with the rest of us. So I, I just think now it kind of all pays off to where he has that whole f sort of fight instilled inside of him. All right, so we've got Combo Fiend versus Mike Ross. Mike playing very we've strong got Mike here. Ross just going at it. Oh. Now Mike Ross is not holding down oh. back. And so that, that Sean kick, very good for Abel. And the other thing is, Headbutts leave the ground really slow. So at that range, say you try to do jabs, you just grab the other jabs. Oh, uh, okay. You okay. Want, yeah. Peter turns it on. Alright, uh, Mike Ross looks angry. I didn't want a fucking headbutt right here. I didn't want a headbutt. I'm telling you, I did not want a headbutt. And the fucking headbutt came out, I was like, that's fucking ochi. He actually doesn't take losing that bad. I mean, he gets mad because, you know, you work so hard, but he doesn't let it eat him alive to where it just, like, he'll be mad about it for days and days and days. He gets over a loss pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm really upset. <laughs> I'm really upset. Oh, That's what you get down in All right, next up. <laughs> Mike, Mike's just silent on him right now. <laughs> Oh, he threw him out of the, the step start. Nice, Mike Ross. Wow, bringing it yeah. back, Mike Ross. Yeah, this is it. Oh, uh, and that's, that's it. Game, game over. Uh, Shady K and uh, Mike Ross has taken the tournament. Guys, I'd like to thank you for watching the stream, all 704 people. Yes, we, me and my partner got first place. Shady K. It was a tough uphill battle. I won $73. Like I said, I found out it was a $5 entry tournament. Um, however many people. So we've been here for like... Let me check. It's 12 o'clock. The tournament started at about 8. Four hours. Four hours. Eh, a little under 20 an hour. Eh, it's it's kind of trash. But, you know, it's like, I don't care. Because this isn't the main source of income. But it helps. You know, it's just side change to have fun. And this is a small tournament. Bigger tournaments, um, first place you get like 2000 So I'm cool with my 70 bucks today, though. I can spend it and go eat a nice meal, a nice, nice steak dinner. For side money, I do videography. And there's a company that I like. I've been doing a lot of video jobs for weddings, parties music videos and stuff like that um yeah but no, doing video videography on the side I, I i enjoy it a lot
Michael majored in uh, radio and TV broadcasting in school, and my wife and I used to always tell him, said, man, you're on the wrong side of the camera. <laughs> you know? Guess who's here, everybody? Your favorite hero! Listen to the audience! Michael would see something, whether it be a stand-up comedy routine, and he would just like memorize the dialogue, or, or and then start incorporating his own things into that. So if we ever had a camera rolling, he'd just all of a sudden snap into character. Playground. They're a mess. It's time to get down and party! I'm talking to kids for crying out loud. They don't understand what I'm saying. He enjoyed the attention and acting hilarious and doing his stand-up comedy and things like that for his friends and family. But it wasn't anything he wanted to do as a job, necessarily. He doesn't look for that spotlight, right? If it found him, he would probably excel at it, right? But he's not the kind of guy that's going to go looking for something like that. I think right now his whole preoccupation is with the video game. Easy one for me to say. Like, if I had a choice between getting a paycheck for gaming or getting a paycheck for videography, it'd be gaming any day. You know, that's just it's way more, you know, that's me. I woke up extra early because I've been waking up early all week. Been tired as I'll get out, but I had to wake up so I could get ready to drive down to Arizona, which I am here. Um, I left the good Cali weather to come to a spot where it's 94 degrees at night. I'm here because it's, it's a devastation weekend, as they call it, and it's Arizona's biggest tournament. And right now I feel like I'm going to get last place. Because I haven't slept. I haven't been thinking about the tournament. I've been busy with a lot of other stuff during the week. I'm just like dead tired right now. And I got to be up in a few hours to check in for registration. I feel terrible this morning. I, I woke up every hour. But um, I'm listening to my music right now. That's an instant power up. You got your song going, how can you lose? Like, I get last place and still feel like I won as long as my song is playing. It doesn't matter. Do you really mean that? <laughs> no, I don't really mean that. <laughs> Do you have any idea who's going to be there today that you know? Combo Fiend is going to be there. You saw him in San Diego. This dude, Marn, from, he's from everywhere, Texas, New York. Just travels all over the place, goes to whatever tournament he feels like, whatever he feels like. Alex Valle is going to be there. You never met him. But Alex Valle is currently labeled the king of SoCal, the king of L.A. Because he always wins all the tournaments down there when he enters. But he says he's coming here to Devastation to get first place. Uh, we'll see about that. Talk a little bit about you know why they're picking these particular characters. Like why are okay. these considered the you know for people who like just are completely new to Marvel? Um, we got Magneto on the left. Magneto has infinite. I'm not 100 percent sure, but there's a guaranteed prize amount. It's like for 1500 to 2000 dollars. Yeah, um, for first place. Second place is probably like 700 something, and then it pays you know fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth get paid, but it's just a pat on the back. You definitely feel tension, mm -hmm. and you can get, you know, the nerves can get the best of you. And that's what, like, players like me, 
and other players that have been playing for a long time, whenever they play somebody new, they know that already. Like, I know that if I play somebody new, um, there's a good chance that they're going to be nervous like crazy and they're going to be shaking at the joystick. And I'll be fine because I, I can just tell myself, I remember what that was like, you know, when you're kind of nervous like that. It's like me, I'm not nervous. I'm just anxious. Like, I'm ready to play, you know, I'm pumped up. Um, that kind of affects you too, though. You know, you might be too too hyped up and you might, you know, miss mess up something, you know, because you're just too anxious. Obviously, this is why I drive to Arizona for it because I love it so much. I love that, that rush, that adrenaline rush. What a Set up for that. Uh, with Ultra 2, you have more options. If you can land it, free, you have more options. I gotta play juice box table next. Uh, okay, he could do that. I don't want to lose it. Uh, you know, as kids, I'm gonna be really mad. It's specific. It, it, you know, it doesn't. I think that this one is uh, going to be a great right one. This. this is actually a quarterfinal matchup, so the winner of this match guarantees a spot in the top eight for the finals that will take place tomorrow and likely to be facing Valle. Abel's grapple soft player. Applying a little bit of pressure there. So now Juicebox applying pressure with the low kicks and the sand four. Cancel into the EX overhead hit. Twice Rock has done that right there. Oh! Mike Ross not very happy about that. And that is going to end it to give Juicebox the first game. Right now, Juicebox with that advantage. I got to imagine that he's going to feel a lot more comfortable with that huge health advantage he's got over his opponent. So Mike Ross is really suffering here. Really feeling like really not responding to the pressure that he was applying. Well, Mike is low. He decides to move in. And Juicebox is going to find himself in the semifinals. Now, Mike Ross is not out of it. He's just down in the loser's bracket. Just means that his uh, job's going to be a little bit tougher. And uh, now we're going on to Valle versus Bucktooth. And this match will determine who will go on to face Juicebox. Are you more mad at him or are you mad at yourself? I'm mad at him. Yeah. I don't know. Mad at the gate. That's a horrible so match. I feel so bad. A horrible right. match for Honda. Yeah, you gotta walk into my shit. I wanted to play Vine so much. I'm gonna make it. go live with Mike Ross versus Mr. SNK. Remember folks, these are important matches because the uh, loser will go home. Only the winner advances to stay alive in this tournament. Mike Ross in that first round was a little bit aggressive and now he's kind of like backed off a little bit. He's just hanging on the life lead. Mike Ross counters with the EX headbutt cleanly. And Mike Ross will take that first matchup. If he eats another one of those chip hundred hands, that's it. Oh. Oh. oh! Man, and he is 0 for 3 for those today, unfortunately. So Mike Ross starting out game number 3, and it is very, very important game here in the grand scheme of these lower brackets. And now Mike Ross is on game point. Oh, Mike Ross may just seal the deal with that one. Now Mike just sitting back. He doesn't, he doesn't have EX near. There so it is. Gonna... There it is. Mike, Mike Ross giving a bow there. Out of like 200 entrants, I did make it into top eight. So uh, that's, that's, that was the goal. Now I'm still in Arizona. Don't have to go back to L.A. 
I take losses horribly. And when I lost to that one, I was ready to go home, obviously, because uh, at that point, I didn't feel like I wanted to play anymore in the tournament because I didn't want to stay, like, possibly lose again. And the main reason why I definitely would have lost my next match is because in my mind, I was still thinking about my previous loss. So, like, I was just gone. But fortunately, I pulled it together, stuck through it, and played and won. I mean, I'm still not happy. I'm still upset because now it's just one more loss and I'm out of the tournament. You know, realistically, I know my chances are still good. It's just a matter of if I play right and if I don't psych myself out. As long as I don't do that, then I'm still in a good position. Oh, oh, man. Man. Oh, man. Oh, man. He's got Martin right here. Right here. I got more. This should be a, an interesting matchup. Both players so respected of the other player. Combo can do whatever he can to work himself out of that corner. Mike Ross not trying to let him get there. Guy dropping in, paying him a visit. There it is. Mike Ross takes that first game. It's a combo fiend thinking that Ross is going to actually put something out. Waking mm -hmm. up the EX top two. See combo fiend. Keep Mike Ross at bay this time around. Mike Ross up one game. Loser goes home. Winner advances to fight the winner of Filipino Chance versus Alex Valle. Here he oh. goes. Here he goes. Ooh. Oh. Mike Ross. Win that one. And uh, that means that Mike Ross will go on to face the winner of Filipino Champ versus Alex Valle. There's a lot of good players here, but they don't really consider themselves the best. They feel they're good players, but they don't go around telling other people that, you know, that they are just the hottest. So I just want to beat Alex just to try, just to beat Alex. Because he does He does, yeah. He's, he feels himself on high levels in ways that he's probably not even aware of that he's feeling himself. So I, I just want to try to humble that down. Mike Ross versus Alex Valle. One of these top four players is going home. All right, Alex Valle opening up the round with a DP. All right, coming with a little bit of aggression. Poor not getting shot by Alex fishing for the cross up. Oh, very nice. Are we going to get it again? Yes. Who's trademarked that? Signed, Alex Valle. XO, XO. Oh, it's two out of three. Yeah, it's currently 1-0. Uh -oh. Oh. 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 oh! oh! Let's go, baby! Crushed. Mike, Mike Ross had to be really careful here. Oh. oh, if Alex would have chosen the midair uh, strong, he could have set it up for the ultra. Yeah, here we go again. The X-100 hands. So Keeping that combo EX going. to the normal, to the standing round. And 18, it all connected. Alex is telling him, give me a reason. Give me yeah, a reason to give you this DP. There he goes. Oh. Oh, not a cross the situation. Oh. He gave him a reason. Still got a little bit of health left. Now Mike Ross with a full ultra meter. Mike Ross has to get in or oh, use he it. Does. Yeah, and he has not had luck. Oh! oh! But well played. And Alex Baye moves on. I lost to the guy I wanted to beat. I lost to both people I wanted to beat. Uh, really salty right now, not happy. But then again, you know, fourth place is, is not bad. 
it just sucks knowing that like if I got past that hurdle, I probably would have beat my next hurdle and could have won. It just sucks knowing that you're so close to winning. The only times where like a loss would be a little bit more serious to him is if it's either against a certain person or just a certain situation where the odds were stacked up against him and there was so much disbelief that he could ever even get that close that it becomes a personal mission of his to really win this situation. Um, and those are the times when I can tell it's a little bit more than just a win or loss to him. There's just something much greater on the line. Oh, I'm sitting there like... Oh, I was thinking, I was like, I was thinking to myself too, I'm like, how am I going to get this? Like, if I dash... He might punch a hole through something real quickly, or I hear, like, joysticks slamming against things, and I know, I know, like, oh, that was a very serious loss. I didn't prepare enough. I haven't, like, sat down and had, like, super hardcore practice sessions like I used to do back in the day, so I just realized that I need to go back into lockdown mode, lock myself in the basement for about two weeks, possibly three weeks, before EVO in Vegas. And then that way, when I show up at EVO, I can just be a monster and wreck everybody. EVO is the largest fighting game tournament in the world. When they started, they had like, I don't know, like 40, I don't know how many people they had, like a couple dozen people show up. Now, 10 years later, they have, you know, 5,000 people show up and 2,000 of them are entered into the tournament or whatever. There's like a lot of people. The only reason why EVO is so big, like consider the best tournament is because they bring all the players. They get the largest number, largest turnout. It's the only thing of that magnitude in the fighting game community and so many players go. I mean, you have players coming from all over the world. If you can do well at EVO, you are some of the best players in the world, like the top 1%. I'm nervous like crazy about EVO. Due to my circumstances last year, I didn't have my head in the right place, so I barely was playing the game. I went to EVO last year, I lost my first match, won my second, lost my third match, and then I was out. That was my EVO experience. You know, you, you wait a year to win one game, and that's it. That sucks. I don't know who's going to be at EVO. I know there's like over 2,000 people, supposedly, so i got to be ready for all of them. In the past two weeks, I've been playing a little bit more than I normally would before EVO, because normally before EVO, I wouldn't play at all, and I would tell myself, oh, that's the right thing to do, like, you know, just go in there fresh, clean, don't overdo it, but now, nah, it's the exact opposite. Let me just play as much as I can um, without driving myself crazy. Before, you know, I've been good in my other games, but not like this. And this year, I actually have a chance to do really well. And what's at stake has never been this, this much, you know. They got G4 TV that's going to do the coverage at the event. And they're going to do a 30-minute special on TV about it. Um, so we're finally getting even more exposure. Top 8 gets a special limited edition gold joystick. You know, it sounds nerdy as all get out, but hey, to say I have a gold joystick, I'm going to go nuts. I'm not going to play on it. I'm going to hang it up on my wall. And it'll say one of 24. You know how sick that is? And on top of that, there's like $20,000 at stake. So that's a pretty big payout. I do not expect to, to continue this for longer than one more year. I say like one more year would be my absolute cutoff. And of course, if nothing's happening by then, then that's it, I gotta stop. Like I can't keep doing it. I think for myself, it would just feel like I'm wasting my time. You know, even though I'm having like fun right now, it's cool right now while I'm having fun, but you gotta get serious, of course, too. The only way I would keep going is if there's like real money being thrown around. I mean, $100 here and there is cool, you know, you can eat and stuff like that. You know, big tournaments, $1,000 gets thrown around. That's cool. But you have to work so hard just to get, like, you know, $2,000 or something. Like I said, an ideal job would be holding a camera for a, like, a David Letterman type show. You know, that's, that's my job. I show up, I hold the camera, I go home, and then I'm done. And that's it. That's my paycheck. As long as I got my priorities in life straightened, as long as I got all of my goals, you know, and I'm, um, you know, I got a good job going and everything like that, 
then yeah, I can do this on the side. But if I'm trying to do this as a main thing, nah, that's crazy. last night so I feel more warmed up more prepared tired as I'll get I got like four hours of sleep that's not enough but everybody else in there got either four or less so I got to capitalize on that I've never been in a tournament this big in my life but We'll see what happens. I like walking around the, the lobby and seeing players sleeping. It lets me know that they ain't ready. They're not prepared. <laughs> the biggest of the biggest of the biggest tournaments. That's when everybody from not just the U.S. but all over the world come um, for various fighting games. There's 16 pools with 128 people in each pool. Um, 128, give or take, you know, a few. You know, that's about 2,000 players. It's a double elimination tournament, meaning there's a winner's bracket and a loser's bracket. So you can lose once. And if you lose twice, you're out of the tournament. I'm from Minnesota, so it's, it's kind of harder to see the bigger players. It's nice to come out here and, you know, at least meet them. It's kind of the reason you play. You want to get good. If I don't lose a match, all I need to do is beat six straight people to get to Saturday. And Saturday is uh, top 32. Looks like it's going to be uh, Mike Ross on player two here. Yep, Mike Ross, a uh, very famous SoCal Honda player, probably one of the top Honda players in the country. Now, one thing I will say about Mike Ross, he uses Honda very differently than most Hondas that I know. Honda's a very defensive character, but Mike Ross loves to go on the offense with Honda. Ricky O putting on a good show here so far. Now, smart play from Ricky here. Just kick it back there. Switch up the rhythm, let Honda come to you. Yep, Honda can't build any meters. Let's see if Mike Ross can actually make an adjustment. Bison successfully blocking and closes out with a big stand roundhouse. Put Mike Ross on early notice. Mike maybe not quite sure what, I'm sure he knows what to do, but not uh, reacting quite quickly enough in some circumstances. Uh -huh. Ricky all over him here. Nice. Nice read. Ooh. Very dangerous to head. He's all over him. Yes. Mike Ross is in serious danger here. Oh, nice. One chance. 
He went for the big... Oh, oh what a big lead! Ross, Ross! And the crowd is He's not quite good. Safe jump in. Hands blocked. Oh, no! Psychic head by Mike Ross. Stop his feet! Mike Ross jumping around. Feeling it. Both players with incredible comebacks. <laughs> round one to Rick Hill. Round two to Mike Ross. Let's see who can maintain the momentum. Yeah, the mental game is now reset. Everybody's high. Yeah, get him, Mike. Still anybody's game. Both playing a little loose here, so it's really uh, anything can happen. Oh, he attempted ultra. And oh, got a teleport. Yeah. That is not the correct counter. Right. And it was another nice read by Ricky O, but yeah. executionally, he didn't right. quite, quite he was waiting out. for that. That's unfortunate. Mike Ross gets away with a little something there. <laughs> uh, he was really. Uh, You're not going to teleport back on. What the fuck are you talking about? I just qualified in winners, so now I'm top 32. Now, I'm excited, but I'm not, you know, that's not what I came here for. I wanted to get top eight. If I can do that, you're going to see me be the happiest man in the world. I will do cart flips, cartwheels, backflips, jumping jacks, naked. So I can't wait. The reason why I play this game is, first off, it's fun. You know, that obviously, if a game's not fun, you ain't going to play it. <laughs> you know, I also wouldn't play it. If there was only, you know, a scene of like three players that played it. That's why you don't see people walking around carrying a tic-tac-toe board, you know, challenging people on the streets. Nobody plays that. But everybody knows how anyways. Okay. It's good competition because, you know, when it's just, I guess it's the male competitive nature or something. But I guess that's not really true because there's females that play it too. A whole lot coming from all over the world. I think I just like... I like playing the game, and I think it's fun to be able to say that you're good at something, right? Because if I sucked, uh, would I still be playing? To talk more about one of the reasons why I play this game, um, at West Coast Warzone, um, a tournament or whatever, I had just lost a match. And I went outside and I was super mad and I was like, why am I playing this stupid game? Like, I'm just wanting to stop playing this game until the next version comes out so, you know, like, it's it's more balanced, whatever. And, you know, I kicked one of the doors down. I was mad. You know, I was just mad. I, was, I turned green, veins started popping out. But some dude came up to me and talked to me and said, like, you know, you're Mike Ross, right? You know, while, not while I'm steaming, man, but I was still pretty mad. I was like, yeah, what's up, man? And he just wanted to tell you, like, he shook my hand. He said, you know, it's like, it's so nice to meet you. You know, my name is so-and-so. And, you know, I came out here from Texas. Um, you know, I'm a cancer patient. While I was in the hospital, you know, the doctors didn't give me any time. Like, they said I was going to die or whatever. But I still had a laptop, and I was really into Street Fighter, and I was watching your videos. And, you know, I said, I'm going to play this game when I get out of the hospital. I'm going to pick E Honda. You know, this dude tells me that. Like, he's supposed to be, The doctor said he was going to die. He survived, and he's out there playing e-honda because he was watching my videos you know you know what kind of feeling that brought to me like i i'm a grown man i'm about to cry in this guy's face thinking that's like you know that's like the most amazing thing i ever heard you know because i can relate you know i lost my mom to cancer so i know how serious that is and what kind of situation he must have been in so when he's telling me that i'm just like all right why would i stop playing this game you know i never know i never know who's out there that might like it you know might say this is entertaining you know i'm gonna play your character because you play it you know it's affecting people everywhere that i'm not aware of that's real <laughs> that's pretty sick i spent more time than i've ever had at anything getting mentally ready for this tournament the mental preparation i went to a whole nother journey You know, you got to account everything into it. Evo, you know, has been around. You got to remember how you did previous years. And since last year was the worst Evo for me of my life, you know, I had to come in around this time with a whole new mindset, a whole new attitude. 
not letting any negative energy get to me. I just had to stay focused. Once again, all super swing by their four finalists. Please get the front up here where I can see you. Everybody up here really knows what they're doing and is able to make those split-second adjustments and read the mind of their opponent. And we have one of the biggest surprises in the tournament in the winner's bracket, J.R. Rodriguez. People underestimate him. He's really shown that he uh, has earned a place on the stage. Let's see what he can do against Mike Ross. Yeah, and the Raging Demon is definitely a very scary weapon that sometimes I feel like some Akuma's underutilized. And again, let's see if Mike Ross can make the adjustment. He may have some experience against J.R. as another Southern California player. You know JR is going to be looking for that. Nice combo there. From Beautiful Mike Ross. stuff. Beginning, of course, with that jumping strong. And Mike Ross likes to play offense with Honda. And so far, it's been working. Let's see if JR's got some gas left in his tank. Oh! Not sure what he was going for there. I think that that was going to be jab, jab, walk up, Raging Demon. Uh, I think that was the plan. Uh, Mike Ross was just going to have none of that. JR in a strong position to take this round. Let's see if Mike can make some magic happen. Wow, I don't know what JR was thinking there. He looked like he might have had a free combo on Honda. JR Rodriguez, Raging Demon Specialist. But you know what? Finally was, breaks one out for us. That was only a half full ultra, so it didn't do that much damage, but that did and took the rest of the life off. And JR Rodriguez has tied it up 1 1. Mike Ross looking like he was really in control of this entire game. We've seen it turn back around. This room is almost silent. Yep. This crowd, as we were uh, panning around showing you, is absolutely riveted. <laughs> is this match point? Match point for JR Rodriguez. This is match point. Trying to bait it out. I've it seen happen. him use that trick before. I know it's in his it's in his tool bag. But Mike Ross jumps straight up instead of forward. Oh no! Oh, no, no, what's gonna happen here? Mike Ross. Oh, Very he's got powerful it. pressure. Be it. Oh. No, does not complete with the standing roundhouse. He was worried that oh, he oh, oh, Mike it. Ross pulls it off. Mike Ross needs to jump, reads the demon foot. Uh, Mike Ross came within pixels of destruction. He's always got a backup plan, and so he's always very good at adapting to the situation. No matter what the odds are, no matter how bad the situation looks. He's known for having really great comebacks. Mike can still find a way to come out on top. Um, I was trying to play safe, I was trying to play reckless, I was trying to feel out the other opponent. Um, and it cost me you know, some close calls, it made me some close calls, but I feel I played the best I've ever played in my life up here. I didn't ask to win the tournament. I just wanted top eight. You know, to, to, for me to ask to win the tournament is I have to be, uh, you know, comfortable with my skill level. And I feel that I am a decent player, but I don't know if I'm on Daigo's level. I know I'm not on Justin Wong's level and, you know, some of the other players, but I do feel like I did deserve to get top eight. Like, I could work hard enough to get that. It's not even on the you know, I don't mention it often, but I had made a promise, not really a promise, but I had asked, you know, my mom for help. I said, all I want to do is get top eight this year. And, you know, I just sat down and really asked, you know, to talk to her. I still talk to her, you know, and I said, you know, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. But if you want me to get top eight this year, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to do it. So how would you guys feel about a little uh, winner's bracket action? I think it's time to get back to the winner's bracket. Well, let's talk about it. We got uh, Mr. Mike Ross rocking the craziest Honda ever. Mike Ross has one of the most aggressive Hondas we've ever oh, seen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been unbelievable. From now on, uh, he's considered a turtle eight. character. So uh, here we go. On resistant. the left. Make some As they're announcing here. Oh, Mike they're announcing here over the house audio. Everyone who wins from this point out is in the top eight. Oh, boy. The and his opponent, Dr. Chaos. Dr. Chaos. Greatest Ken player so far. 
Oh, nice read from Dr. Chaos, and he's going to complete that combo. Wow, tricky. That was sneaky. Goes for the short hurricane. Oh, fake cross-up. Double tricks from Dr. Chaos. Wow, a medium oh, throw over. That time into another throw. Mike Ross being demolished here. i got to feel bad for him in this situation. Dr. Sure Chaos. Shenanigan. Dr. Chaos pulled out, I think, eight tricks there. All of them work. You're now thinking about what just happened, yeah. trying to process that, and that opens the possibility for something else even worse about to happen. It's a constant battle of tug of war with, you know, the player's mind. Cross wasn't ready for that in round one, but in round two he's loaded with a little ammo. If I pull a little bit, let me see how you respond. How strong are you going to pull back? And then if I see, oh, you're, you're just going to let me get away with whatever I want, I'll just take one big yank and just, you know, pull it out. Clutch EX headbutts and to now, throw Ken away. And now slight lead to Mike Ross, uh, but a night he seems to have found his footing. Nice mental adjustment for Mike, very impressive. My Honda versus Dr. Chaos's Ken. He made it the furthest. He's got the best Ken in the U.S. right now. However, I have a lot of practice against Ken, so I felt like, you know, I didn't go into the match saying, I wonder what he's going to do. Missed opportunity there, possibly for Mike. Wow, I like that bold dash. In. Very bold dash did not pay off. Round piece. Nobody's won a game yet. We just started. Oh, no. Wow, silences him out of the air. However, I see why he's the best kid in the U.S. because he hit me with some of the trickiest stuff that other kids weren't doing. All the follow-ups. Wow. Nice. Oh. Not over. Unbelievable, nice care throw. Beautiful stuff from Dr. Chaos. Really making the most of the opportunities. Staying very mentally composed this whole way. And what I realized what I needed to do is figure out how to shut that down. He's got a huge life lead. Uh-oh, Dr. Chaos is coming back. There's a Mix up. Mike Ross getting that EX headbutt to get him out of the fake cross oh. attempt. Crumples and sweeps him out of there. Mike Baby said, oh, maybe I wanted a better combo than that, but I'll yeah. take it. Dr. Chaos up one game over Mike Ross, but Mike Ross up one round in the second game. However, he adapted to what I was doing and did some tricky stuff to get in. It's right here. Oh, he had the... Oh, he lines it up. Oh, he got the be able to do it. Oh, do it. oh, he had the super, though. He got a super cancel. I'm Good sure power. that would have done it. Wow, Dr. Chaos playing so strong. Mike's got to be heartbroken about that do round. Do you think there's a reason he didn't go for the super? Amazing stuff. Uh, let's see if Mike can uh, mentally compose himself after that one. During the actual match, I kept myself thinking of the matchup specifically. I said, I have to stay at a certain range because there's no move that Ken can do that'll hit me if I stand outside of his range. And I can just keep him out with some of my pokes. And Mike grinding him down now with that hand pressure. Ken has no great answer except to possibly risk assure you. And look at Mike Ross playing footsies. Dr. Nice. Yeah, Dr. Chaos got incredibly frustrated and backed himself into the corner under Mike Ross's footsies right there, and Mike Ross takes that game. So I just, I buckled down and remembered everything, every Xbox Live match. Just trying to remember nice all race. of that stuff. The falling Honda there after that crumple with the fierce uppercut. Big and there, uh, three, and three hits away. That could Big be bad news. Up. Here it comes. That's yeah. crazy. That fake cross-up has been a nightmare for Mike Ross in this match. He's yeah, yeah, he he very little damage. Out. He feels confident. Anytime he won a round, I didn't think I might lose. I said I might lose if I continue to play like an idiot, you know, and let him get away with the stuff he's getting away with. Another near uh, perfect for Dr. Chaos, and it's a match point for him. Pushing Mike Ross to the corner right now. Uh-oh, fighting his way back out. Low jab in the hands. Another low jab in the hands. And as I said, oh, brilliant series there from Mike Ross. Very close to busy. Oh. Very good read on the neutral jump right there. And blocking in the EX headbutt. Auto correct Auto correct the EX headbutt. And yeah, it was just some hands to kill him. You saw that hand pressure this scaring him. And as I mentioned, yeah. the only answer is to show you. And yeah. Mike made it out correctly. Here we go. Final crowd. Wow. The crowd is on their feet. Mike That's Ross has a lot of fans. <laughs> it came down to the last game, last round. Bang! Right in the jaw. Oh. Is that a hoedown? And he had a life lead on me. We might call a jamboree in some parts of our country. It was but, nice, but the damage wasn't huge. And I always tell myself, I don't care how much life my character has left. If I play solid and play correctly, I should still be able to come out and pull a win out. He's getting very close to the corner. We got that hand pressure I was wow, talking about. Where he wants to be. Wow. Smart flyaway. Wow. Catches the jump back. I think Mike Ross is going up to stop him from doing that, and it did not work out. Yeah, that worked out really well for Doc Chaos. Don't jump. What are oh, you doing, oh, sir? Oh, Chaos. Maybe cracking mentally. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Don't out on his feet. Crowd's getting ready to explode. Oh, Mike Ross. Oh, 
sure the cameras are on this dude right now. He is taking his, uh, his appreciation from the crowd. It may not look like much on the video, but there was a lot going on up here. And that's why I think I got um, excited after I beat him. myself and I even told myself when I was up there and I was losing I said this is why you got to show why you are who you are and you can make comebacks you know by capitalizing on their mistakes I'm tired of comebacks I just wish that people would just let go of the stick and I can just press as many buttons as I want one-handed but you know they're fighting back it's not that I'm making it hard on myself this is just a tough competition man. this is a really tough competition I'm starting to lose my voice I'm so excited from America, stuff like that all the time. Uh, I never get to play people from out of, from other countries. Not only will I play somebody from Japan, but he's the best player. I've been wanting to play him for 10 years, you know, basically. Ever since they introduced him, like, this is Daigo the Beast. And I've never played him once in my life. Excuse me, Mike Ross is using uh, a jumping fierce to float over those fireballs, and each draw first blood there with that hit. Sure, you can meeting giant hand from Honda. And there's Mike oh. Ross. Oh, but he dropped a combo there, which could be a sign of some severe stress. EX hands. He's got a big advantage, but never count out Daigo. He's known for his unbelievable Daigo unrelenting in these attacks, almost as if it's on a, 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 on a timer. Yeah. Wow, and that's going to be the ultra. Oh. Saying, I'm not afraid of your Honda, even in the corner. And Daigo nice. just chipping away to give himself that advantage now. Wow, a nice reversal uppercut there, going the other way. And he closes it out. You know, I was literally prepared. I feel to the best of my ability on every match, except Daigo. That's when I completely lost focus. Daigo really came back from a nice deficit, or from a severe deficit there. You know, I prepared for everything. I wanted top eight. I had stayed focused in every match to get top eight. I wanted to play Daigo for nine years. <laughs> so when I actually got that opportunity, I was like, I can't believe this has happened. Because of how focused I was, you know, I got to this point, but now I don't know what to do with it. Again with the throw. Oh, just endless. He's disrespecting Mike here a bit. Oh, he needs to. Uh, oh no, Daigo saying if you're not gonna win, if you're not. Oh, perfect wow. round from perfect Daigo. Round. Daigo untouched. Mike usually a smiley, happy, excitable guy. Beforehand, you know, everybody had some kind of advice for me, but the unanimous decision was don't jump against Daigo, don't jump. And I, I told everybody, okay, okay, but in my head, because I had been preparing so much, I said, I can jump on Daigo and get away with it. I know it because, you know, I haven't gotten this far from being an idiot. Don't, you better believe that the other finalists are watching this match and are seeing, oh my God, what is this guy he doing? He's fine form. He's all over Mike here. Wow, another brilliant read from Daigo. And really, Daigo has uh, correctly anticipated almost everything Mike has done here so far. And then after that, I cracked. I cracked. All I did was jump and I died. <laughs> then they were like, see, I told you. But they don't understand what I was thinking before that. Looks very bad for Mike at this point. It is. He's, on, he's down to his last breath. He's going to make something very magical happen in this situation against the Beast. Oh, that could be oh, one. That's that's magic. 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 The, magic. the big ultra combo. Oh. And now it's anybody's game. If was Mike he laying in the way? Really happen. Oh. oh. Mike went for the overhead. It looked like something. Oh. Mike was ready to go for the big stomp overhead. Daigo just woke up with that EX throw you can. Oh no, that's a heartbreaker. Mike Ross now down to his last breath. 
Daga with the cross up and a very dominating performance. Well, I, I would have to say Mike's good as own against, yes, the beast. Daga. Indeed. Mike will be sent to the loser's bracket, so we'll hear from him again. I, I expected a great player, and that's what I got. You know, I wasn't expecting to get, you know, destroyed. You know, like where it's like a perfect every game. You know, I think he did get a perfect on me. It was almost like I wasn't even playing to beat him. I was actually playing just to see what he does when I do certain things. You know, I consider that a learning experience. And Daigo is without question the smartest player I've ever played against. This is a loser's challenge. So whoever doesn't make it out, you know, they're gone. They're out of Evo 2010. Well, Mike Ross did oh, the after yeah. that dominating. He's going to go straight for the demon. And I think that might close it out. And Overhead. just time. He got up just in time to take that last beating. Mike Ross with a little cute smile on his face saying, like, okay, a cute move, infiltration. He must not contend just with the Kuma covering. Oh, nice, oh, nice combo oh, there from Mike really Ross. Back. All right. And again, the big uh, disadvantage for Akuma. And again, infiltration there with some smart stuff, guessing that Mike is going to jump in. Mike's looking uh, a little bit frustrated, but still playing his game. Nice comeback there by uh, Infiltration, and he's got Han in the corner, and that's going to be it. Mike Ross. And that is game one to Infiltration from Korea. A lot on the line here, and Mike Ross would really like to put his stamp still down. Still really having a, you know, having a little bit of a rough time against Infiltration. Oh! That's uh, Desperation Ultra there yeah. for Mike. That's not a good play. Uh, it does not pay off. So now Mike must win this last round, uh, where he's fighting for his tournament life got to be demoralized by that, but he's actually still very much in this one. He just needs to find his way forward. It's a nice EX headbutt. Yeah, the opportunities are there against Infiltration. He's just not exploiting them. Oh, so smart by Infiltration. And Infiltration grinds him out uh, with that uppercut. Mike Ross, an excellent showing this year. That was an excellent showing. I knew right away, I said, you know what, if I lose to this guy, it's okay, because this guy is outplaying me. He's playing so well, and I was just, like, I was giving him thumbs up during the match, because I was like, oh, that was smart, that was really smart. He played so well, I loved it. This is the best tournament I've ever been to. Yeah, fourth place, hometown favorite. I believe it was Mike Brown! For one, I did well. The second thing is I didn't lose to any American players. I lost to Daigo, who won the tournament, and Infiltration, the Korean player. The guys I lost to were just, they were better players than me. You know, unfortunately, you didn't make it as far as you wanted to. I mean, what is that? Oh, no, I made it as far as I wanted to. Yeah. I wanted to get top eight. That was my goal. So, I did good. I'm, I'm happy right now. I'm feeling myself. <laughs> Oh, there you go, man. Nice speech. Oh, you have to sign mine, too. Oh, no. You come back next year? I'm here every year. I'm here every year. Yeah. You're in there now. <laughs> you know, I come back next year, and if I don't make it out of pools, which can happen, then everybody says, oh, he's terrible. And, you know, eh, whatever. People always talk. But at least this year, I proved that I'm not a joke. It has stayed in here. So you're going to hang it up? Uh, you know, some people have suggested that I drill holes into it and get a gold necklace and hang it around my neck and walk around with it everywhere I go in the streets, which kind of seems like a good idea. But um, I don't know. Until I really feel confident and know what I want to do with this, I'm cool leaving it right here. I always told my kids, I said, you know, just do something that you really enjoy doing, and someday somebody's going to pay you for it. Because you're going to get good at it. You'll be the best. I guess there's an old adage that says, if you do something for one hour a day and you do it uh, without hesitation, you're going to get great at it. And I don't know how, how much time Michael spends on this thing, but it's his passion. And as you can see, this is the fourth gold TE stick ever made <laughs> out of 24 because I got fourth place. Yeah, I kind of thought just like every other parent, yeah, he's going to graduate from college, going to get a job and what he graduated in and go buy a house, get married, have a couple kids. Yeah, I thought all that idealistic stuff. I was kind of hoping for it, but hey, it's this is better. This is much better that he's doing something that he really enjoys. Uh, you know, obviously, that, that, that um, uh, I lost my wife 
their mother a couple years ago changes you, right? Gives you a different perspective than you might have had before. Um, I knew it was possible, but actually seeing it and actually getting it was like unreal. You know, because I knew how many good players were going there, and the fact that I was the one that like pretty much lucked out and got it makes me happy. So well, you worked for it. Oh, I worked for it. Yeah, I worked my behind off for it. But the fact that um, that you know I didn't choke under pressure or anything and played perfect, perfect to my ability, you know, um, that makes me happy. <laughs> Mike doing well, not just well, but fantastically well at Evo. There's always groups of players that are really good in their hometown, and then when they come out to play, like, you know, they get beat down. So if you can do consistently well in your area, and then do consistently well at Evo, you are undisputably really fucking good. After Evo, he's pretty much proven himself as one of the best players in the U.S., and I don't think there's really any way you can argue that right now. Prior to Evo, they felt that I was just like a mediocre player, you know, who got lucky in all of my matches that I won. Um, and then after Evo, they finally, like, they said, you know what? You're actually a really good player. You know, like, we respect you. I mean, not all. You know, some people still think I'm trash, and that's okay. You know, I, I think I'm trash. There's nothing wrong with that. The only thing that he could have done better was win. But, I mean, you know, it's not about... It's really not about winning because, okay, the guy that won, Daigo. Like, well, Daigo won. Big surprise. Whatever. Good for you, Daigo. But Mike getting fourth place is a way bigger deal. Or at least, yeah, that's how it is in like the Street Fighter sense. So I've, I've definitely seen like a growth in his confidence and you know just his overall happiness. I think has, has grown from all of this. I wanted top eight. I got top eight. Got fourth place. You know, let's hope I can get third next year. Work from there. Third, second, and you know, on my best day, maybe even first. Is that like a dream for you? You know, the first one, I mean, I've, I've completed like two in one tournament. One, getting top eight at EVO. Two, playing Daigo. Um, the next one is going to Japan and just playing all those players. So let's hopefully I can make this like the best year of my life and go out there. It'll be great. You know, the comparison that I see with the stuff that we do is, is it's no different than skateboarding. You know, back in the 80s, you know, like I was three years old watching Tony Hawk videos when he was a teenager and stuff. And that's how, of course, I broke my leg trying to mimic his moves. <laughs> but, um, you know, with Street Fighter, there's, there was a cult following, you know, many years ago, even today, that, are, uh, that, that follow our videos and stuff like that. But look what skateboarding became with the X Games, and I don't see why ours shouldn't go in that direction. But it's really not up to me to make that happen. I'm just here playing the game. 